Welcome to Science News Thursdays, the weekly show that dives into what's new in the sciences with a smattering of memes. Today we're talking about a one kilometer wide asteroid that was captured by ground-based telescopes during its close approach of Earth, what humanity might look like in the future, and more. So let's go ahead and jump right into the science news and the memes. Hopefully, not like that. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, and this is Science Get. It's been a while since we've talked about near-Earth objects, and not because asteroids suddenly stopped zipping past the Earth. There certainly hasn't been a lack of news. Look, kids, I reported on a lot of asteroid news last year, and I needed something of a break. Maybe it's because I just got done watching Don't Look Up, which will be getting its own video here in the near future. But I feel the sudden urge to comb the skies for potential doomsday rocks. On January 18th of 2022, hey, that's this year, a large asteroid, which is thought to be mostly composed of stony materials, safely passed by the Earth. I said safely. That's better. The asteroid in question was somewhere around 3,280 feet, about one kilometer or 0.6 miles in length. If you want a good mental image of just how big that is, it's around 2.5 times the height of the Empire State Building. So, like this. 1994 PC-1, which is the name of the asteroid, at its closest approach to the Earth was somewhere around 1.93 million kilometers, 1.2 million miles away from us. That's 5.15 times the distance from the Earth to the Moon. So we were never in danger, but I'm sure at least one person in the comments is gonna ask, is it gonna hit us? even though it's already past us. No, it's not. Calm down. Goosefraba. The main reason I highlight this story is because of the incredible footage we've captured of the thing from the ground. While the asteroid is certainly considered to be hazardous, its total speed is around 19.56 kilometers per second, or 12.15 miles per second. You might recall some of my other videos talking about ways to measure how devastating an asteroid or cometary impact would be, and while 19.56 kilometers a second sounds like quite a lot, and you'd be right, that's a similar speed to Apophis, yet still under the speed of Chicxulub, the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. Speed and angle are very important when dealing with impactors. It's probably safe to say that if 1994 PC-1 ever did hit the Earth, depending on its impact angle, it caused quite the stir, and probably half the population wouldn't even believe it existed. Seriously, go watch Don't Look Up for a healthy dose of catharsis. Has humanity already reached the pinnacle of evolution? Has evolution stunt for us? I certainly hope not. And a group of scientists led by Penny Spickens at York University have attempted to paint a picture of how the future human face will look. In the last two million years, humanity's gotten a major evolutionary facelift. And this process definitely hasn't stopped. And you might be surprised to know that sci-fi B-movies had it right all along. The man of the future has a big cranium for his ever-growing gray matter, and a shocking lack of melanin. Seriously, jokes aside, a lot of studies I've seen suggested that humans will be darker in skin tone, not lighter. But that's a whole different discourse. Penny Spickens told Curiosmos.com that, Our eyes are very close together and look forward. Human dental arches are disproportionately small in relation to the rest of the body, and we have smaller teeth. That is, the physical characteristics of our face are unusual in nature. The evolution of our facial features have followed a progression of looking more threatening to being more capable of expressing emotion. The reason for this has been shocked up to humans needing to band together. You know, that thing called society, which is slowly falling apart. In order to live with others, we needed to ditch our resting bitch face. Long story short, Spickens believes that human faces will have larger craniums, larger eyes, and more juvenile features in the future. So the humans of the future will continue to look young upon reaching adulthood. Holy crap baskets, anime had it right all along. Full article is in the description for additional details.
last week as I released my summary of the James Webb Space Telescope's awesome potential, it also finally reached its final cosmic parking spot, the L2 Lagrange point. Yes, the James Webb Space Telescope has indeed slid into L2 like a boss. This is because I released the video a week late, thanks to the Honga Tonga eruption. The long process of mirror alignment has started, and so far, despite some issues deploying the second mirror segment, which have since been resolved, according to Scott Manley, who operates an awesome YouTube channel devoted to teaching people about orbital mechanics and rocket science. During a news conference on January 24th, Keith Parrish, James Webb's commissioning manager, said, L2 is an incredible accomplishment by the entire team. The last 30 days, we call that 30 days on the edge. We're just so proud to be through that. We were just setting the table. We were just getting this beautiful spacecraft unfolded and ready to do science. So the best is yet to come. Jane Rigby, who you'll remember from my video on James Webb, went on to say, We're a month in, and the baby hasn't even opened its eyes yet. Everything we're doing is about getting the observatory ready to do transformative science. That's where we are. It's still going to be several months worth of smaller calibrations before the telescope is ready to light our butts on fire. Set your calendars for April 24th, people, and call it first light. And I do mean the official term, where the telescope actually starts doing science. As one helpful commenter on last week's video mentioned, check the article in the description for more details. Did you know there are bunnies in the Arctic? There is. Where? There. What, behind the rabbit? It is the rabbit. One such critter named BBYY in northern Canada has just recently made a record-breaking journey, traveling an incredible 388 kilometers, 241 miles, over a span of 49 days. This isn't just a record for Lepus arcticus, but apparently for all bunny kind. Arctic hares are about the same size of a house cat, so somewhere around 4 kilograms, or 8.8 .8 pounds, which is way lighter than my cat. And she's on a diet now. They're often preyed upon by wolves and foxes native to the Arctic, so they're pretty important to the stability of the region's food web. Not that kind. Back in 2019, Dominique Beatrice... Dominique Beatrix? Hold on, I gotta consult Google for this. Back in 2019, Dominique Berteau of the University de Quebec, a Romanowski, can you tell I don't speak French, as well as some of their colleagues, placed tracking collars on 25 Arctic hares and then released them near Elsmere Island in Nunavut, Canada. As the critters began their individual journeys, no one was certain what their futures would hold, but typically these types of hares spend their entire lives in a single area, what's known as their family territory. But apparently this group of hares said screw that and started spreading out, some of them going as far as 113 to 310 kilometers, 70 to 192 miles. For an arctic hare to survive a journey like this, they've got to be able to find food without becoming a happy meal to some ravenous predator. Unfortunately, the hare who made the record-breaking trip of 388 kilometers died about a month after reaching her destination. That's incredibly sad. None of the other hares caught up to BBYY, and the cause for the poor critter's death is unknown. But Berteau and their colleagues are hopeful that BBYY's trip was not made in vain, and that the data gathered from her harrowing journey will help to inform future scientists on how to best preserve the Arctic ecosystem. According to Berteau, it's exciting to find something unexpected in an animal that we thought we knew quite well. That's all I've got for you this week, but be sure to tune back in next week for more science news and memes. If you dug this content, be sure to do all that algorithmic jazz. Like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, and share this video with someone who loves space and science. Or bunnies? And hey, if you missed my update on the James Webb Space Telescope, check that out right here. Hint, first light is going to be awesome. Wow, check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time. All hail the great cosmic cow.